was from the Adoramus Hymnal, produced by Adoramus in cooperation with the Church Music Association of America, published by Ignatius Press, San Francisco, 1997. That was from the Passion Tide Holy Week selection of Disc 3, 1 through 13, and in particular 9 through 13, 1, 2, and 9 through 13. And the the disc and found in the book of, of in numbers three eighty to four oh four. The Lenten Prayer of Saint Ephraim. O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of sloth, despair, lust of power, and idle talk. But give rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to your servant. Yes, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own transgressions, and not to judge my brother, for you are blessed forever and ever. Amen. And let us welcome our Eucharistic Lord by singing, O Salutaris, O Saving Victim, O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. saving victim open wide the gate of heaven to us below our foes press on from every side your aid supply your strength bestow to your great name be endless praise immortal godhead one in three O oh, grant us endless length of days in our true native land with thee, O salutaris ostia, que celi pandis ostium, bella premuhunt ostilia, darobe fair auxilium, unitrinoque domino, sit sempiterna gloria, qui vitam si ne termino, nobis, Donet in patria. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. 
and he repents of evil. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, I, Joel 2, 13, Luke 15, 18, 19, I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no more worthy to be called your son any longer. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against him, we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws which he set before us. Daniel 9. 9 and 10. Jesus said, Whoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Mark 8, 34. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. We all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Isaiah 53, 6. Office of Readings for Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Lent, March 21st, 2020. The Psalms are for the Psalms of Week 1, which can be found in the iBrevery app, or in the American Breviary, The Liturgy of the Hours, 1976, Volume 2, Advent through Easter, on, beginning on page 1076, page 1076. And the readings begin on page 338, 338. The hymn for the Office of Readings can be found on page 40. O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The hymn, Now Let Us All With One Accord. To God the Father glory be, to Son and Spirit equally, who was and is and e'er shall be, one God the Holy Trinity. <coughs> now let us all with one accord, in fellowship with ages past, keep Vigil with our heavenly Lord in his temptation and his fast. The covenant so long revealed to faithful men in former time, Christ by his own example sealed, the Lord of love in love sublime. This love, O Lord, we sinful men have not returned but falsified, author of mercy, turn again, and see our sorrow for our pride. Remember, Lord, the frail we be, by your own kind hand were we made, and help us lest our frailty cause your great name to be betrayed. Therefore we pray you, Lord, forgive, 
So when our wanderings here shall cease, we may with you forever live in love and unity and peace. Hear us, O Trinity sublime and undivided unity. So let this consecrated time bring forth its fruit abundantly. Antiphon 1 on page 1076 for Lent, the fifth Sunday. On page, excuse me, on page 1082, page 1082, for Lent, the first and fifth Sunday, Antiphon 1. See how the cross of the Lord stands revealed as the tree of life. See how the cross of the Lord stands revealed as the tree of life. Psalm 1. There are two ways a man may take. They are happy who, putting all their trust in the cross, have plunged into the water of life from an author of the second century. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, that yields its fruit in due season. And his leaves shall never fade, and all that he does shall prosper. Not so are the wicked not so. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. <coughs> For they, like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind. When the wicked are judged, they shall not stand, nor find room among those who are just. For the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. For they are like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind, when the wicked are judged, they shall not stand, nor find room among those who are just. For the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. Psalm Prayer Lord, you are the fullness of life, of holiness and of joy. Fill our days and nights with the love of your wisdom, that we may bear fruit in the beauty of holiness, like a tree watered by running streams. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked. Lord, you are the fullness of life, of holiness and of joy. Fill our days and nights 
with the love of your wisdom, that we may bear fruit in the beauty of holiness, like a tree watered by running streams. The Antiphon for First and Fifth Sunday of Lent, on page 1083. See how the cross of the Lord stands revealed as the tree of life. See how the cross of the Lord stands revealed as the tree of life. Antiphon 2. Here is a king of my own choosing who will rule on Mount Zion. Here is a king of my own choosing who will rule on Mount Zion. Psalm 2, the Messiah, king and conqueror. The rulers of the earth join forces to overthrow Jesus, your anointed son. Acts 4, 27. <clears throat> Why this tumult among nations, among peoples, this use useless murmuring? Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. They arise, the kings of the earth. Princes plot against the Lord and his anointed. Come, let us break their fetters. Come, let us cast off their yoke. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord is laughing them to scorn. Then he will speak in his anger. His rage will strike them with terror. It is I who have set up my king on Zion, my holy hill. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. I will announce the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, you are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. Ask, and I shall bequeath you the nations, put the ends of the earth in your possession. With the rod of iron, you will break them, shatter them like a potter's jar. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Blessed are they who puts their trust in God. Now, O kings, understand. Take warning, rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with awe, and trembling pay him your homage, lest he be angry and you perish, for suddenly his anger will blaze. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Psalm Prayer. Lord God, you gave the peoples of the world as the inheritance of your only Son, and crowned him as King of Zion, your holy city, and gave him your church to be his bride, as he proclaims the law of your eternal kingdom. May we serve him faithfully, and so share his royal power forever. Amen. Antiphon on 1085, Lent first and fifth Sundays, Antiphon. Here is a king of my own choosing, who will rule on Mount Zion. Here is a king of my own choosing, who will rule on Mount Zion. Antiphon 3. Lord, you are my protector, and you have raised me up in glory. Lord, you are my protector. You have raised me up in glory. Psalm 3, I am safe in the Lord's keeping. <clears throat> Christ fell asleep in death, but he rose from the dead, for God was his deliverer, St. Irenaeus. O Lord of salvation, bless your whole people. O Lord of salvation, bless your whole people. How many are my foes, O Lord? How many are rising up against me? How many are saying about me, there is no help for him in God? 
O Lord of salvation, bless your whole people. But you, Lord, are a shield about me, my glory who lift up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, he answers from his holy mountain. O Lord of salvation, bless your whole people. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory who lift up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord, he answers from his holy mountain. O Lord of salvation, bless your whole people. I lie down to rest and I sleep. I awake for the Lord upholds me. I will not fear even thousands of people who are ranged on every side against me. O Lord of salvation, bless your whole people. I lie down to rest and I sleep. I awake for the Lord upholds me. I will not fear even thousands of people who are ranged on every side against me. O Lord of salvation, bless your whole people. Arise, Lord, save me, my God, you who strike all my foes on the mouth, you who break the teeth of the wicked. O Lord of salvation, bless your people. O Lord of salvation, bless your whole people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be. World without end. Amen. Lord God, you heard the cry of your Son when he was oppressed, and saved him from the sleep of death. Arise, Lord, help your church. Be it shield, so that it may hold up its head, and radiate the glory of the resurrection. Amen. O Lord of salvation, bless your whole people. Uh, Lent, the first and fifth Sunday, Antiphon, on page 1086. Lord, you are my protector, you have raised me up in glory. Lord, you are my protector, you have raised me up in glory. On page 338. If anyone obeys my teaching, he will never die. If anyone obeys my teaching, he will never die. The first reading from the beginning of the letter to the Hebrews. Verse, chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 4. The son and heir of all things is exalted above the angels. In times past, God spoke in fragmentary and varied ways to our fathers through the prophets. In this, the final age, he has spoken to us through his Son, whom he has made heir of all things and through whom he first created the universe. The Son is the reflection of the Father's glory, the exact representation of the Father's being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, as far superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. To which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. And again, when he leads his firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship him. Of the angels, he said, he makes his angels winds and his ministers flaming fire. But of the sun, your throne, O God, stands forever and ever. A righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved justice and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellow kings. And... Lord of all, you established the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. All of them will grow old like a garment. You will roll them up like a cloak. Like a garment they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will have no end. To which of the angels of God has God ever said, 
Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent to serve those who are to inherit salvation? In view of this, we must attend all the more to what we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels stood unchanged, and all transgression and disobedience received its due punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore a salvation as great as ours? Announced first by the Lord, it was confirmed to us by those who have heard him. God then gave witness to it by signs, miracles, varied acts of power, and the distribution of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as he willed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsory from Hebrews 1, 3 and 12, 2. Christ, the radiance of the Father's glory and the full expression of his being, upholds all things by the power of his word. He cleansed us from our sins, and now he has taken his place in heaven at the right hand of God in his majesty. And now he has taken his place in heaven at the right hand of God in his majesty. And now he has taken his place in heaven at the right hand of God in his majesty. Our faith rests on Jesus, who endured the cross for the sake of the joy that lay before him. And now he has taken his place in heaven at the right hand of God in his majesty. And now he has taken his place in heaven at the right hand of God in his majesty. And now he has taken his place in heaven at the right hand of God in his majesty. A second reading from an Easter letter by St. Athanasius Bishop from his epistle 14, one and two. We keep the coming feast of the Lord through deeds, not just words. The word who became all things for us is close to us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who promises to remain with us always, he cries out saying, See, I am with you all the days of this age. He himself is the shepherd, the high priest, the way and the door, and has become all things at once for us. In the same way, he has come among us as our feast and holy day as well. The blessed apostle says of him who has awaited, Christ has been sacrificed as our Passover. It was Christ who shed his light on the psalmist as he prayed. You are my joy. Deliver me from those surrounding me. True joy, genuine festival, means the casting out of wickedness. To achieve this, one must live a life of perfect goodness and in the serenity of the fear of God, practice contemplation in one's heart. This was the way of the saints who in their lifetime and at every stage of life rejoiced as at a feast. Blessed David, for example, not once but seven times, rose at night to win God's favor through prayer. The great Moses was full of joy as he sang God's praises and hymns of victory for the defeat of Pharaoh and the oppressors of the Hebrew people. Others had hearts filled always with gladness as they performed their sacred duty of worship like the great Samuel and the blessed Elijah. Because of their holy lives, they gain freedom and now keep festival in heaven. They rejoice after their pilgrimage in shadows and now distinguish the reality from the promise. When we celebrate the feast in our own day, what path are we to take? As we draw near to this feast, who is to be our guide? Beloved, it must be none other than the one whom you will address with me as our Lord Jesus Christ. 
He says, I am the way. As Blessed John tells us, it is Christ who takes away the sins of the world. It is he who purifies our souls, as the prophet Jeremiah says. Stand upon the ways, look and see which is the good path, and you will find in it the way of amendment for your souls. In former times, the blood of goats and the ashes of a calf were sprinkled on those who were unclean but they were able to purify only the body. Now, through the grace of God's word, everyone is made abundantly clean. If we follow Christ closely, we shall be allowed, even on this earth, to stand, as it were, on the threshold of the heavenly Jerusalem and enjoy the contemplation of that everlasting feast, like the blessed apostles, who, in following the Savior as their leader, showed and still show the way to obtain the same gift from God. They said, See, we have left all things and followed you. We too follow the Lord, and we keep this feast by deeds rather than by words. The Responsory, Hebrews 6, 20, John 1, 29. For our sake, Jesus went before us into heaven, and he has become like Melchizedek, a high priest forever. For our sake, Jesus went before us into heaven, and he has become like Melchizedek, a high priest forever. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, and he has become like Melchizedek, a high priest forever. And he has become like Melchizedek, a high priest forever. O oh, sacred head surrounded, number 45 on page 175, a B. O oh, sacred head surrounded by crown of piercing thorn. O oh, bleeding head so wounded, reviled and poor to scorn. No comeliness or beauty thy wounded face betrays. Yet angel hosts adore thee and tremble as they gaze. Oh, that's in the Holy Week Pentecost, today's missal, the Oregon Catholic Press. Number 45 on page 175. O oh, love, all oh, loves transcending, O oh, wisdom from on high, O oh, truth unchanged, unchanging, surrendered up to die, was e'er a love so wondrous that from his heavenly throne God should descend among us to suffer for his own. 
Oh, Jesus, we adore you. Upon the cross, our King, we humbly bow before you, and of your victory sing. Your cross is our salvation, our hope from day to day, our peace and consolation when life shall fade away. A reading in the Missalette of Advent Lent, page 82. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit dwelling in you. sacred head surrounded number 45 on page 175 in the holy week pentecost today's missal oregon catholic press number 45 on page 175 a <clears throat> oh sacred head surrounded by crown of piercing thorn oh bleeding head so wounded, refiled, and poor to scorn, the power of death comes o'er you, the glow of life decays, yet angel hosts adore you, and tremble as they gaze. In this your bitter passion, Good shepherd, think of me with your most kind compassion. Unworthy though I be, beneath your cross abiding forever would I rest. In your dear love confiding and with your presence blessed. What language shall I borrow? To thank you, dearest friend, for this your dying sorrow, your mercy without end. Lord, make me yours forever, a loyal servant true, and let me never, never outlive my love for you.
The stone which the builders rejected has become the keystone of the structure. It was the Lord who did this, and we find it marvelous to behold. And when they saw the son, the tenants said to one another, here is the one who will inherit everything. Let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they seized him, dragged him outside the vineyard and killed him. Canticle 1, Appendix 1, Canticles and Gospel Readings for Vigils, 2256, page 2256, the Antiphon on page 2255, turn back to us, O Lord, and we will come back, renew our lives that we may live as in times past. Turn back, turn us back to you, O Lord, and we will come back. Renew our lives that we may live as in times past. Canticle 1, Jeremiah 14, 17 through 21. The lament of the people in war and famine. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the good news. Mark 1, 15. Let my eyes stream with tears, day and night without rest, over the great destruction which overwhelms the virgin daughter of my people, over her incurable wound. If I walk out into the field, look, those slain by the sword. If I enter the city, look, those consumed by hunger. Even the prophet and the priest forage in a land they know not. Have you cast Judah off completely? Is Zion loathsome to you? Why have you struck us a blow that cannot be healed? We wait for peace to no avail, for time of healing, but terror comes instead. We recognize, O oh Lord, our wickedness, the guilt of our fathers, that we have sinned against you. For your name's sake, spurn us not, disgrace not the throne of your glory. Remember your covenant with us and break it not. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Antiphon on page 2255 for Lent. Turn us back to you, O Lord, and we will come back. Renew our lives that we may live as in times past. Turn us back to you, O Lord, and we will come back. Renew our lives that we may live as in times past. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Whoever serves me must follow me, says the Lord, and where I am, there also will my servant be. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. A reading from the Gospel according to John 11, 1 through 45. 
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that she, he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. After this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, our friend Lazarus is asleep, asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death. Well, they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So when Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I'm glad for you that I was not there that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Lazarus arrived, when Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come up to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. And when she had, he had, she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house, comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deep, deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came into the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. So Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. 
He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus wept. Not a very long line in the Bible, but one of the most profound, because it underlines the full humanity of Jesus. That Jesus, who is Emmanuel, God with us, who is, as the beginning of the Gospel of John said, the Word was with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he became fully human, emptied himself of his glory, and went through all of the struggles we have, all of the needs of learning, all of the emotional difficulties that we have at, at the different stages of our lives. <laughs> he was very close to Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Whenever he'd come to Jerusalem, or often when he'd come to Jerusalem, he would go and visit them. And Lazarus died. But Jesus said to his disciples that it was good that he wasn't there when he died, because now they would believe. Now they would come to that fullness of, of faith in what he was talking about to believe him. They'd seen his miracles. They've seen even raising the the son of the daughter of, uh, the son of the widow of Niam, raising of the daughter of, of, of Jairus. But here now, someone who's been dead for a long time, there can be no doubt that this is a resuscitation of the person wasn't really dead. He'd already been dead for four days, and in that climate, um, especially if you're in a cave, in a relatively damp cave, well, enough said. And so when he came, both Martha and Mary said, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But Martha professes, whatever you ask of God, that is of God the Father, God will give you. And she, he, Jesus says to her, your brother will rise. And Martha, like a good uh, theological Pharisee, the school closest to that of Jesus, they who believed in the bodily resurrection as Jesus taught, she said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. But Jesus gives an I am saying. And in this I am saying, like I'm he's saying, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the bread of life. He's saying, I am God. Because only God can claim to be the resurrection and the life. Only God can claim to be the truth. Only God can claim to be the way of the truth. Only God can claim to be the life. Only God can claim to be the source of the life, the bread of life, the sust sustenance of, of eternal life. And he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, that is, whoever has faith in me, whoever invests his life in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who believes, who lives, 
believes in me will never die. Now, of course, that isn't literal. All of those who believed in Christ died. Those who were there. Martha died. Mary died. Lazarus died again. But Jesus offers us that eternal life. Indeed, the resurrection, the bodily resurrection. Because your soul is immortal, it doesn't need a resurrection. But our bodies definitely do. And Martha professes faith in Jesus. Yes, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. And so Jesus comes to the tomb and he's all churned up. This translation says perturbed, but that's sort of blah translation. But he, he's all churned up emotionally with all this, deeply disturbed by this, 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 this situation. And he comes and then he weeps. And the people say, see how he loved him, that he manifested this. So they come to the cave. And this is the icon of the raising of Lazarus. <clears throat> and they've moved the stone, which is in a round thing here, which is... Uh, and all they're all there. And Jesus is there. And he says to Lazarus, come forth. And so Lazarus comes. He's wrapped up of, of like a mummy. So Jesus has to tell them, unbind him. And Jesus says that to, to us, to unbind one another. People who are caught up, let's say, in scrupulosity. People who are caught up with uh, addictions and the like of, of whatever sort. To unbind the person. People who are bound up in guilt. Of course, with addictions, you have to cooperate. But that's true in all the others, too. We have to yield to God's grace. Grace doesn't overwhelm us like a tsunami contrary to our will. And so I, I just, I always see Lazarus sort of hopping, coming out because he's bound hand and foot. And then they release him and the, the people are amazed and many people come to belief in Christ through this. And indeed, afterwards, when uh, the plot is to get rid of Jesus, they're going to get rid of Lazarus too, because he has shown what is coming, the resurrection. And so we are called to have faith in the resurrection. The world scoffs at this, but the world has always scoffed at it. They said, how can a body that rots away, how can that be brought back? Well, God is the creator. There's nothing impossible for God. If Jesus has told us that our bodies will rise again, we trust Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, as the resurrection and the life, God incarnate. And so may we live in that power of the Lord who is here with us.
the Kyrie Pantocrator, the song, the canticle of Hezekiah. O Lord and ruler of the host of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, who made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array, all things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power, but your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, O Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O oh Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let my me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O oh Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life, for all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory unto ages of ages. Amen. Father, help us to be like Christ, your Son, who loved the world and died for our salvation. Inspire us by his love. Guide us by his example, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Father in heaven, the love of your Son led him to accept the suffering of the cross, that his brothers might glory in new life, change our selfishness into self-giving. Help us to embrace the world you have given us, that we may transform the darkness of its pain into the life and joy of Easter. Grant this to Christ our Lord. Amen. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. While Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us prepare to receive the Eucharistic blessing of our Lord as we sing the Tantum Ergo, down in adoration falling, found on the back cover of the Missalette, the inner cover. Down in adoration falling, this great sacrament we hail. Over ancient forms of worship, nor rites of grace prevail. Faith will tell us Christ is present when our human senses fail. To the everlasting Father and the Son who made us free, and the Spirit, God proceeding from them each eternally. Be salvation, honor, blessing, might, and endless majesty. Amen. 
you have given them bread from heaven, having within it all sweetness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have given us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom. We will live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. the divine praises. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be his most sacred heart, blessed be his most precious blood, blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar, blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, Blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and his saints. Holy God, we praise thy name, Lord of all. We bow before thee, all on earth thy scepter claim, all in heaven above adore thee, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign, infinite thy vast domain everlasting is thy reign hark the loud celestial hymn angel choirs above are raising cherubim and seraphim in unseen chorus raising fill the heavens with sweet accord. Holy, holy, holy Lord, fill the heavens with sweet accord. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's see who's waving here today.
Deborah Scampoli Kruger. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Priscilla Real. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Father Paul Ring. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Sean Curtis. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Barbara Reedy. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be.